Bible study on this Tuesday evening. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. My God, my Father, Lord, as we come boldly for that throne of grace, Father, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, we ask you to forgive us our sin, forgive us our trespasses and iniquities. And Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight, Lord, as we go over some things that I think are important right now that people understand. And Lord, as we look at some scripture and uh, Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, your people of Israel. Lord, I pray for all my relatives and loved ones and friends and those that are sick. And Lord, we ask you to, to heal those that are sick. And Lord, we pray for those that are lost, that they might be saved before it's eternally too late. And uh, Lord, put a hedge around our families. And Lord, we pray for our brothers, sisters, our cousins, our sons and daughters, our parents, grandparents, Lord, and aunts and uncles. And we ask you that you would just work in their lives for the good. And we thank you for it. Again, be with us tonight as we study uh, the things that I believe is important that's on our heart tonight and we'll give you all the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name we pray and ask these things amen oh, excuse me powers of darkness are trying to slip upon me amen all right got a song here by brother Ronnie Gowen Amen. All right. Well, Frizzy, are you ready? I uh, was Frizzy. Your Not hair good. was frizzy, but you got it tamed down, didn't you? Yep. All right. How about you there, Happy? 
All right. You ready to sing a song? Mm -hmm. Amen. Paul and Luke were taking a trip when the south wind blew softly. They boarded a ship. Destination already planned. They were guided by God's mighty hand. But soon after the ship set sail, they encountered a stormy gale. When the sun did not shine upon an unwind, he said, through a trial tonight my girls have you been through a trial yep amen glory to god hallelujah all right <laughs> all right well i don't see anybody here tonight oh this one's blank i don't know why hmm is anyone here? Three people. Oh, okay. All right. Ma'am? Your peaches are bad. They're full of mold. Really? I didn't know we had any left in there. It's expired already. Okay. All right. All right. You could be turning to First Corinthians chapter 15, but that's not what I'm going to hit. I'm going to read some of that tonight, but that's not my main message. America, America's in bad shape. I just cannot believe on how many ignorant, well, I can't even say ignorant, stupid people that there are in this country these days. But I know how they got there. I know how we got to this, got in this situation of all this stupidity and socialism and, and everything. Uh, they dumbed down our young people in the schools over the last 30 years. Uh, might even been before that. We our colleges, universities, and all, and schools have been infiltrated by Marxists and socialists, communists, liberals. Uh, how many people really appreciate Donald Trump now that he's not there? Since. Uh, President Biden has been in office. Everything that was making America great and that was working for us, uh, he's totally destroyed in just a couple months. Totally destroyed it. Why would anybody want to do that? 
because that's their plan. The Democrats want to destroy America. They want to bring it to naught. They want a dictatorship. And I can't believe that there's people out here that are so ignorant to believe that we can support all these freebies that they want to, that they say they're going to give. Let me ask you a question. If they're going to give all this free stuff away and everybody's going to be in line for all this free stuff, who's going to be working to pay for it? Somebody's got to pay for it. I had a friend one time. He's passed away now. But uh, he used to tell me there's nothing free. And I used to argue with him. I'd say, yes, there is. Salvation's free. He said, no, it's not. And I thought about that for a while. And you know, he was right. It's free to you and me, but somebody had to pay for it. And God gave his best. The Lord Jesus Christ paid for it on the cross of Calvary and suffered in the flames of hell. Amen. And rose again the third day so that you could have free salvation. But you see, it costs somebody. It cost them dearly. So there's really nothing free. Anything that you're given, someone paid for it. Somebody paid for it by their sweat, their tears, or their blood, or their labor. Amen, which is your sweat. Now you think about it. If these Democrats, or should I say Devilcrats, are going to give all this stuff away, who do they think is going to pay for it? The people that are expecting to get all this free stuff and wanting this free stuff are people that are lazy, usually no account, and always want to ride on somebody else's back. But you know, they're going to be surprised one day because it's going to come back to bite them. What they're doing is people just don't read or really study anymore. They're like sheep. Sheep are dumb. And they just follow whatever somebody tells them. And, I mean, I watch the people in these masks, and I grant you, it might help. But I see people riding down the road in their vehicle with just themselves in it wearing the mask. What are they doing? Protecting themselves from themselves? The reason we're in the mess that we're in is because of a person back in the 1800s. And he wrote a manifesto. It's called the Communist Manifesto. I posted it on Facebook Sunday. And they hate America because of her prosperity and her power and everything that she's been. And one person wants to rule it. You look at Castro in Cuba. Why are people fleeing Cuba? Why are they fleeing Venezuela? Why are they fle fleeing from these third world countries? Because what they've enacted does not work. Dictatorship does not work. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When God gave us this country and people worship God, and they honored the laws of God. We had liberty. Do you realize how much liberty has been taken from us in America today? Right now, the company I'm working for is trying to put trucking back on the road. This poor woman, the secretary, she's been typing, filling out forms, traveling up to Blythewood, South Carolina, doing all this stuff, can hardly get any help, and just going through great pains to try to get a tag and a DOT and an MC number so they can put a truck to work and put a driver to work. When I was in trucking in the 80s and 90s, you went down, you paid your taxes, you called Canal Insurance, and 
they put you on insurance and you went down and you bought your tag and you went to work. Not so today. This country is a mess. People are ignorant. They're trying to shut down the small businesses. What happened to our liberty? Well, we've forgotten God. But Karl Marx wrote the ten planks of communist, the Communist Manifesto. Number one says the abolition of property in land and the application of all rents of land to public purposes. In other words, zoning laws are the first step to government property ownership. You can't just go out and buy a piece of property today and do what you want on it. You can't build on it. You can't do a thing without whether you're zoned for it or if you've got uh, certain permits you have to get. A heavy progressive or gradual income tax. Need we say anything else? Look at the taxes that they're nailing us with. President Trump was trying to eliminate some of those, and they want to raise them. Why? It's control. It's power. I mean, you see that crazy lunatic Maxine uh, Waters. Waters. I mean, that's the kind of people running our country. That's in office. Can you imagine what our constituents are like if they voted something like that in? And people following Al Sharpton or Farrakhan, these morons. Look what they've done. They're idiots. You look at uh, Bernie Sanders. That sorry communistic piece of garbage has never worked a job in a day in his life. He's lived off the government. And he wants to give your hard-earned money away to people that don't want to work. Number three, abolition of rights of inheritance. Read death or estate taxes. You know, in some places, they want to take, if, if you were to leave an inheritance to your children, say 100000 the government wants at least 50000 of it. For what? You paid taxes on it all your life. You put it away. Now you want to give it to your children. And they want to take it again. That's, what the, that's the third plank of communism. Confiscation of property of all immigrants and rebels. Read the book, The Accused, Not the Convicted. It's asset forfeiture. DEA, IRS, ATF, etc. Number five, centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and exclusive monopoly. Read the Federal Reserve Bank. Fiat, paper money, and fractional reserve banking. Do you know that the Federal Reserve Bank is not federal? That is privately owned? Do you know what they did to us? We used to have a gold standard or a silver standard. When I was growing up, I remember in the 60s that we had gold certificates on our paper money and we had silver certificates and our coins were made out of real precious metal, silver and gold. It used to be that if you had a $5 silver certificate that you could be able to turn that in and receive $5 worth of silver. Today it's worthless paper. Amen. Now, who got that money? Who took that gold and that silver? The so-called Federal Reserve, the bankers. Who are they? Private bankers. They took your money, gave you worthless paper. And the dumb sheep like we are just followed right along with it. Number six. Centralization, centralization of means of, of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. Read the DOT and the Federal Aviation Commission and the, and the FCC, Federal Communications. I just told you when we first started what we're going through trying to get 
paperwork and licensing from the DOT, the Federal Motor Safety Carriers Act, Carrier Safety Act. They're already exercising this stuff. Where'd it come from? The 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto. The extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. The bringing into cultivation of wastelands and improvement of soil generally in accordance with a common plan. Read controlled rather than owned or subsidized. You look at today, if you own a piece of property or say you own a piece of property, you're paying property taxes every year. And if you re refuse to pay them or you can't afford to pay them, your property is confiscated. They've established wetlands and <clears throat> certain things where you can't do anything on your property. They take your money. So all you're actually doing, you don't own anything today. You're renting it. And then they tell you what you can put on the property that you're renting. Number eight, equal liability of all to labor. Establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. The minimum wage in slave labor, you know, like in China, our most favored nation trade partner. Can you figure out why we are partnered with communism? They're taking your wealth right now. Number nine, combination of agriculture and manufacturing industries. Gradual abolition of distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of population over the country. Read this, read forced relocations and forced sterilization programs. <laughs> you know, like in China, right? And 10, free education for all children in public schools. Abolition of children's factory labor in its present form. Combination of education and industrial production so that all children can be indoctrinated and inoculated with the government propaganda like majority rules and pay your fair share. Where are the words fair share in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or the Internal Revenue Code, Title 26? The whole philosophical concept of fair share comes from the communist maxim, from each according to their ability, to each according to their need. The very concept is pure socialism. That's what's going on in America right now, right before our very eyes. Now, I thought especially when I went in office, when I was in politics, that we swore an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America. And you know what? Every other government official has too. But are they doing it? Every soldier, every general, what do we do? pick up arms and overthrow this mess? Is that what we do? What do we do? That's why they want to take away our guns. They're afraid that when we've had enough of this, we will stand up and do something. But you know, it goes back to this. We're just a bunch of dumb sheep. Some of us see what's going on. We don't like it. But what can we do? You know, it's like the truckers back in the 70s. Everybody's talking about, we need to go on strike. We need to shut down. So a handful of truckers shut down, the rest of them keep running. It was all talk. What happened to our Republicans in office? Why aren't they fighting like the Democrats did to the Republicans when Trump was in, President Trump? Why? Because there's a lot of them in the swamp that believe just like the Democrats do. How do we get that way? Well, it's because we left God. But I'm going to tell you what. With all this coming down, 
at my age, I ain't got to worry about it. I'm getting ready to get out of here. But the good thing is, if you're saved, in 1 Corinthians, in uh, chapter 15, In verse 50, Paul says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, <laughs> and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We, not, we might not be able to change anything that's going on in this country right now, but we can still labor for the Lord. We can still trust him. He said he'd keep us alive in famine. He said he'd take care of us. So we'll be all right. But what about those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? They'll suffer. And they're going to spend an eternity in hell if they don't repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are we in the shape we're in? Because the love of money. We were so busy trying to make money and seek pleasures that we've forgotten God. We've allowed the enemy to slip in. Look what they're doing in the schools to your children. You remember when they were back a few years ago, where in, I guess it was grade school, maybe even elementary, that they were using sexual protective devices and teaching children how to put them on cucumbers. Where were the people standing up then? This is the leaders in our schools. You know, if you're in your community, you ought to be running for offices for the school so that you can keep an eye on this stuff. We've sat back and let a bunch of, I'm talking about lunatics, get into office to infiltrate our schools and our universities to bring down our morality to insert immorality and liberalism and all this filth. I think it was Marx or uh, Lenin, I can't remember which one, said that up is down and down is up and black is white and white is black and in is out and out is in and good is bad and bad is good. Just twist everything around. Now you look at America today. We've got people attacking our police officers. Do you realize with this George Floyd thing that if these people, if George Floyd would have been doing what's right, and I, I don't condone what the, what the officer did. When people yelled to him to get up and leave him, let him up, he can't breathe, he should have done that. But the fact is, none of that would have happened if he was breaking the law. But yet they want to make a hero out of him. They want to give millions to his family. That's ludicrous.
It's stupid. Yes, the guy should have to pay for his crime, uh, the officer, but I think what they're trying to do to him is a little overboard for the situation. What is wrong with people today? They've forgotten God. Amen? It's not going to get any better until we get back to where we need to be. That's with the Lord in the church, raising families. Look at all the shootings that have been going on. Every day there's a murder. Every day. Innocent children dying. They won't let the cops do what they need to do. They're letting the people in Portland and, and Minnesota riot when they ought to just run them in and lock them up. There's one thing to have the right to march or protest, but when it turns violent, they need to shut it down right then. But they won't. You know why? It fits into their agenda. Black Lives Matter is part of this mess. So is Antifa. And our people are sitting back watching stupid people like Chris Como on CNN and believing what that idiot has to say. Then you got the sodomite, Lemon, spewing his garbage. People like Maxine Walters, Pelosi, Adam Shift, oh, Shifty Eyes Shift, Nadler. I mean, look at these idiots that are in office and the propaganda that they're pushing out. Now, I, I, it's hard to believe that they're really that stupid. They've been educated beyond their intelligence. But God's allowing it because we've left God. We need to get back to God. Well, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed my rant. Uh, there's another book out. It's called, uh, I think I posted on Facebook, Revolution for Radicals. And they said that's some of the stuff that Obama taught and practiced. He read it. If you look at some of those things and look at what's going on in America today, you'll see it just as clear as the sun shining through your window. You know what's wrong with our people today? They don't read good books. They don't go back and look at history. Read the rise and fall of the Third Reich. And see how the Jews were just marched right into death camps. And what Hitler used to get into power. <coughs> Please wake up. At least God's people wake up. Amen. Let's pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you for the time that you've given us. And Lord, we pray for the folks that are tuned in. And Lord, you watch over.